Hey guys, Fishmonger here. I made a video the other day on HiveOS, which is a Linux-based operating system that you can use for GPU mining, and I had a lot of technical difficulties with it. The video really didn't come out too well. Um, apparently, OBS changed a lot of settings and screwed a lot of stuff up. So I'm going to be making the video over again, hopefully have it be a little bit more structured, and it should be a little bit more helpful for you. Up on the screen right now, you can see the list of things that we're going to accomplish today. Basically, there's five main things. We're going to be downloading the software we're going to be using. We're going to be creating the bootable USB drive. We're going to be setting up an account directly on the HiveOS website. We're going to be connecting our system directly to the HiveOS server. And then we're going to be going over some advanced or some extra settings for this. So if you note on step one there, it says download the software. Um, number two is optional, which is the VNC viewer. Basically, uh, what I'm going to be doing is using this program to use my main computer to remotely log into my actual mining rig and be doing all the commands separately. Um, this way, I don't have to be using a keyboard and mouse and a monitor plugged directly into the rig and entering things in. Um, if you're not comfortable using a program like VNC and you want to just use a keyboard and mouse and monitor directly for the rigs, you can do that. Um, you only actually have to do this once when you initially set up the rigs. After the rigs are set up and they're logged in, you can actually disconnect your keyboard and mouse and monitor and you won't need them. So there's a lot of different types of software out there that you can use to make bootable USB drives. You may already have one. Um, but I'm going to recommend Rufus if you don't already have one or if you actually have one and want to try something else. The program is really simple to use. It's been around for a really long time and it's really lightweight. It's like less than a megabyte. So it doesn't take up a lot of space on your hard drive or your computer. It doesn't do any extra fancy things. It just makes a bootable USB drive and it does it right. Second piece of software I'm going to be using, and like I said, it is optional, is the Real VNC Viewer. Um, this isn't the whole program for the VNC. The I think they call it the Commander or something like that. Um, but basically, this is just the VNC Viewer. It's really lightweight. It's just used to connect one computer to the other and then basically uh, allow you to control it remotely. And then lastly, the star of the show is actually HiveOS, which is the operating system we're going to be installing on the USB. So on the website that's on the screen right now, it's HiveOS.farm. Basically, you're going to want to click on the install button, and it's going to give you a couple different options. You can basically download it via torrent. Uh, you can download the direct file uh, via zip. And if you download it via zip, it's going to be compressed. You're going to have to uncompress it first. And you're going to get a file known as a DD file or a .dd file that you're going to be using to put onto the um, USB drive via Rufus. So I've got Rufus uh, downloaded and it's running right now. You can see it up on the screen. Basically, in order to burn this file directly to the USB, we're going to be clicking on this little icon right here. And you're going to want to navigate to the directory that has the file that you downloaded, which is the DD file or the .dd file. It's not going to show up at first. Just click all files here, and then it'll pop up. And from here, uh, everything for the defaults is fine. All you got to do is hit start. And it's going to say we're going to overwrite everything that's on the our existing USB drive. We're going to be writing the software directly to it, which is exactly what you want. So just hit OK. So now that we've downloaded our software, which was Rufus the VNC Viewer in the Hive OS, and we've got step B running right now, which is creating the bootable USB drive, we can take this time to set up an account on the Hive OS website. When you click on the link to create the account with Hive OS, it's real simple. It's pretty much like any other website you go to to create an account. You can create an account name, you can enter your name, your email address, confirm your email address. Um, and when you click register, I believe it will send an email verification link directly to your email, which you can click and then come back to this page and it'll bring you to the main screen, which I'm going to show you right now. So again, when you first log in, you should be presented um, with a screen that looks similar to this, but probably with less information on it. Um, up on the top, there's a button that says rigs. You're going to want to click on this. And when you do, it should be blank because you shouldn't have any rigs on there. I currently have two different rigs and you can see the rigs uh, that are listed um, basically as a quick summary. Um, the rig ID is basically the unique identifier that HiveOS can use to identify your rig. Um, the name is just a name that you make up. Uh, the IP address is the internal IP address on your network of the rig. Uh, cards is how many cards is detected. Description is basically something you just type in um, to show a brief description of the rig. The wallet is, again, the, the wallet that's set up, but it's named basically however you want. Uh, the miner is currently what it's running. Right now I'm doing XMR stack, getting Monero 7. Uh, the password is the password to the rig. Um, and the version is basically what software that you're currently running. So the first thing we're going to do is set up a new rig. So there's a green button you can see on the screen. It says new rig. You're going to want to click on this. When you first select this, um, 
I, you know, for me, it's showing a miner in a wallet. It's because I already set these up. Um, these are probably going to be blank for you. And if they're not blank, it might have some kind of default. Don't really worry about that right now. The only thing you really want to do is name your rig. That's the most important thing. Name it whatever you want, and you can change this later. You don't have to worry about getting everything exactly perfect the first time. Cards quantity, again, is just a note for yourself to enter how many cards you want. Description, same thing, a note for yourself. It does not matter what you put in here. And then basically password is kind of important because you're going to want to enter a password in that's fairly strong um, that you're going to use maybe, uh, you know, basically to log in to your rig um, and you want to make sure that nobody else can log into your rig. After your rig is entered, we're going to want to set up a wallet. So on the top of the screen, there's a button here. It says wallets. So you're going to want to click on this. So over on the miner page, you can see that I actually have four different wallets set up. You're not going to have any when you first start this. So you're going to want to click on this button, this green little button right here. It says new wallet. When you do that, it's going to bring you to a blank page, which you can then enter in all your information and then hit OK on the bottom. I'm not going to enter in every single thing again. I'm going to open up an existing wallet and show you what I have in there so you can get a better idea of how to set your wallet up. So the first wallet I'm going to go over is my NiceHash wallet. I'm going to click on the edit button here, and you can see this is the same exact screen that you just saw when you're entering in a new wallet, except this already has the information in it. The name on the wallet on the top is just whatever you want to put in there. It doesn't matter. You can enter anything in as long as you can recognize exactly what it is. Personally, I enter the name of the pool that I'm mining to, and then basically the coins that are also linked to that wallet. Down below, there's three different locations for wallet addresses. If you're only single mining, you don't need to enter any more than the first one. And completely disregard the fact that this shows an ether sign and it says e-wallet. It doesn't really matter. It's just a variable. And you can enter in your nice hash wallet address here. I'm the Axe Soup. I love how this comes up like that. That's how I always remember myself as the Axe Soup. For Claymore... If you click on it, it'll have it selected. And then basically, this is the information you're going to want to enter. Um, the pool. Basically, it's uh, daggerhashimoto.usa.nicehash.com. 3353 is the port. Um, wallet, you can see here how it says percent, e wall percent. Again, it's going to take whatever information you have here and drop it down into here and put it in. And then there's the standard period. And then percent worker name, percent. Uh, this actually comes from your rig name. So whatever you named your rig is going to be whatever's here for a worker name. And then again, to get Claymore working for NiceHash, we're going to want to enter uh, these arguments here. To set up the DSTM miner, it's similar but a little bit different. Basically, it says wallet and worker template. So it's probably going to default, if you use the template, it's going to default to say Z wallet instead of E wallet. And this is why I just try to make it simple for myself and I change this to e-wallet because again it's just going to pass this one uh, variable here which is my address down into here and the worker name is going to pass the worker name um, I, you know it's just easier for me instead of having three different wallet addresses I just use the same it, I don't know why they set it up like this but this is what they do the server for this is basically equihash.usa.nicehash.com, so I'm going to enter that in. The port's 3353, and they don't care for passwords. And then the last one is uh, XMR stack. Um, again, it's the same type of wallet and worker template, so I got my eWallet.worker name. Um, the pool URL is kryptonitev7.usa.nicehash.com, port 3363. The password is basically X. Everything else is blank. Um, and then if you hit OK, you will have this all saved. Your wallet is now set up. This is my wallet for Mining Pool Hub. The syntax is a little bit different because, again, Mining Pool Hub accepts information a little bit differently than NiceHash does. So, for instance, my wallet address is basically just my account name, which is Fishmonger. For Claymore, the setting is pretty much the same, except for, obviously, you're using a different server name and port. And then on the end here, the argument's a little bit different because Mining Pool Hub, again, accepts um, this information slightly different than NiceHash does. For the Zcash miner here, you can see pretty much, again, everything is the same except you're changing your pool server and your port. And the same with XMR stack. It is the same information up here for the wallet and worker template except the pool URL and then the port here is different. So really, that's, that's kind of what you want to do when you're setting up these wallets is just follow that template and make sure you're entering in all the parameters and the arguments properly because not all 
pools uh, accept the information the same way. After you've booted off Hive and it's completed its updates, you're going to be greeted with a screen that looks like this. It's going to have the Hive logo on there, and it's going to ask you for the server URL that you want to use. The standard one is the default one, and it auto selects one based on your location. So nine times out of ten, you're perfectly fine just hitting enter and allowing it to use the default. Um, it's going to ask you for your rig ID. If you remember from before, on the screen that has your rigs, you're going to have a rig ID assigned. So you're going to want to type this number in to the computer. In my case, it's 121706. So I'm just going to enter the rig ID and hit enter. So after you enter your rig ID, it's going to ask you for your password. So you're just going to want to type that in. Fishmonger is the best guy ever. And no, I'm just joking. That wasn't my password. Um, I just wasn't going to show you my password. So basically up on the screen right now, uh, you've got some information uh, where it's telling you that it accepted everything. HiveOS is now connected online. Uh, you no longer need to do anything on the computer itself. You can actually control everything directly from the web. So we've just gone through all the basics. As of right now, your rig should be set up and you should be able to control it via the web. Because my system already existed, and I already had a miner and a wallet entered, it loaded those up by default, and it's going to be using those. Um, on the bottom of the screen here, if you want to change or select your different wallets, all you have to do is basically say, hey, I want to mine to Mining Pool Hub, which is the wallet information that you entered, and the coin I want to mine is, well, I want to use the miner, the Claymore Dual that I set up. You can see here, it's going to give you options for all the miners, but if you didn't set these miners up inside of the wallet, it won't let you use it. Basically, it'll just return errors. Um, I did, however, set up Claymore. So basically, I can hit this, and then basically, any anything you select, um, is if you select your miner in your wallet, right? all you have to do afterwards is basically hit this button, and it'll apply that information to the rig. So since I have NVIDIA cards, I have a button that down below says NVIDIA OC. If you had AMD cards, the button will be red, and it'll see AMD OC or something similar. I'm going to click on this, and basically for NVIDIA, it's going to ask me for my core clock offsets, my memory offsets, my fan speeds, and then my power speeds, uh, power uh, amounts in watts. For AMD, it's a little bit different. You don't actually enter the offsets, you enter the absolute values, so just do keep that in mind if you have AMD cards. Since I have a five card system, there's a couple different ways I can enter this information. I could basically say, you know, I could just type one number in and say I want to have all my cores to be core clocked over 100 megahertz over stock. Or if I wanted to um, enter them individually, all you have to do is put spaces in between uh, each value. So for instance here, you can see on the screen to the left here, I'm going to cancel this real quick, um, I've got my five cards and they're numbered 0 through 4. So the first card over here, which is card number 0, this is the memory clock information. Um, the card number 3, which is the fourth card in the list, is actually right here, which is 130. So you can control each card individually um, just by putting spaces in between the values. The last thing that we're going to look at here is just a couple of terminal commands that you can use directly onto the rig itself. So I'm going to bring up my VNC viewer. Okay. And it is showing the rig and some of the overclocking values that I just sent to it. And I'm going to type in minor. And when I do that, if there is a miner that is loaded or running, what it'll do is it'll show me the information for that miner. So right now it's running uh, the XMR stack miner. So you can see that's up. I can actually open a different terminal window down here. And, you know, you have uh, a couple other things available to you. I mean, if you're running NVIDIA cards, you can do the standard uh, NVIDIA SMI if you wanted to take a look at um, some information like the power that's currently running. I mean, all this information is also brought over on the web interface, but if you wanted to see it on the terminal, you can do that. You can see the current driver that it's running right now, 390.25. We can clear this screen. You know, because you're actually running a version of Linux here, 
Um, you could even open up the internet and browse the web if you wanted to. Um, it's got the uh, Midori web browser built directly into this. So you can see this will pop up in a second. Oh, and there you go. Midori is up and loaded. Um, it's just interesting. I mean, you know, you, you do have a fully functional uh, version of Linux on here, um, which you can use all these different tools and, and whatnot with it, which I think is really nice because I think some other miners um, like SMOS and stuff don't really give you that type of control, um, whereas HiveOS does. So I just think it's a nice little benefit. So HiveOS, pros and cons. Um, pro, it's free. You can use it for free um, for up to three rigs. After that, there's a very uh, minimal fee to be able to pay for it. Um, it's, I think, easy to set up um, and easy to use. I mean, clearly it didn't take much for me to go through and do all this. Um, in the beginning, I had to learn a little bit about the wallets and how to properly set everything up. Um, but it's like any other, you know, minor software or anything. Once you do it and you understand how the commands should go in, um, it's all second nature. Another pro is I like the ability to be able to graphically see everything that's going on in the rig. So for instance, here you can see my five cards that are up, the temperatures that they're running, the hash rate that they're running, um, the amount of power that's being pulled from it. Um, it's in a really nice layout um, that's easy to, to understand. And with a couple of clicks, I can easily change wallets and change miners around and change my overclocking, uh, which is simple and easy to do. You know, I also like the fact that it has a couple of different ways where you can look at some charts and get a, a good overview of all your different rigs. Like you can see, I only have two different rigs up here right now, um, and you can see the different rigs that are listed. But if I had 10 or 12 or 50 different rigs, they would all just show up in a line just like this in a real clean, uh, easy to understand uh, format. And it would have all my totals and everything right on top. Um, so it would be really great for a summary. As far as negatives go, I do notice that there is a little bit of a delay um, sometimes when you're updating the rig versus the rig getting the information. I'm not sure if it works that way with other Linux type systems, but I'm not talking much of a delay. Sometimes it's up to a minute, you know, not crazy. I mean, it'd be nicer if it was a little bit more um, instant. It's not, but that's okay. I can live with that. And one of the other negatives that I've had a problem with is... I had a couple of different uh, USB drives crap out on me where basically I just started getting errors after a while. Um, basically, it was saying that it couldn't write information to the USB drives anymore. I actually think that was because I had some really cheap uh, China USB drives because I've since replaced them with some um, PNY drives. And I haven't had that issue since. It's only been a couple days. I haven't had that issue since. So I'm just going to chalk that one up to, um, you know, $2.00. USB drives that you get that were probably reflashed or just use crappy memory or some issue. Hell, here's actually, you can see one of the crappy USB drives that I got. The case actually came off on it when I was pulling it out because all I did was put this tiny little bit of hot glue on the back there to hold it in. So, um, you know, the fact that they're actually physically falling apart on me probably also implies that they're internally falling apart as far as how they're constructed. So thanks for watching this video. Hopefully it was helpful to you. Um, if you do like it, please give it a thumbs up. Um, if you want to see more like this, stay subscribed. Hit the little bell uh, notification down below. You'll be instantly notified every single time I make a new video, which hasn't been very often uh, lately, but you know, I, I certainly enjoy making videos. So I'd like to make some more. And again, the usual fare of questions, comments, all that jazz, uh, email me direct at wowfishmonger at yahoo.com, or you can put a link down below, or a comment down below, which can include a link if you'd like, that's completely up to you, and I'll do my best to help you out. So until later, this is Fishmonger. I'll catch you on the flip side.